Hi, it's Clint coming back with a 2023 update to the totally private Postgres video. And if you haven't gone through and done this before, you're in for a treat. So here's what we're going to end up doing. We're going to deploy a whole entire OpenZD overlay network with a Postgres database, have a Java SDK client that can communicate and see it all working. Let's just get right into it. First thing you'll need is a Ubuntu machine with Docker. It doesn't matter what kind of machine I have. Windows subsystem for Linux, and I have Ubuntu, and I have Docker installed. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a Docker Compose file that will create a controller that listens on port 1280 for API requests. That's important because clients need to connect to the controller for authorization and authentication. Then I'll have an edge router, which has port 3022 exposed to the world, or at least to my Ubuntu machine, so that the Java client will be able to connect to the edge router, and then I'll have a totally private Postgres listening on port 2432 that is not exposed to the world at all. It is only available via the Docker internal network. We'll create a Java SDK client, or actually we'll just run the sample. It will connect to the edge router, so we'll need to authorize that client. We'll do that using a service policy. The edge router will need to offload traffic from the overlay network back to the underlay network, the IP-based Docker network, towards port 5432. So we'll need to authorize the offloading of that traffic, also with a service policy, so that we can have our overall solution of a Java SDK client communicating through an edge router to our Postgres database. And so let's go ahead and do that. If you were to take a look at the samples JDBC Postgres cheat sheet, you'll see all of the commands that I'm going to run and I might edit them. So if they're edited, just go ahead and check out this page. And I'm gonna run these commands now. So let's just get right on into it. First thing I need to do is I need to curl down the Docker Compose file and the environment file that's going to be used for the associated Compose file. Once I've done that, I'm going to edit the EMV file and just add a password. Uh, if it doesn't have a password, it'll generate it. So you definitely wanna add that password. Once that's done, now I need to add Postgres to my uh, OpenZ, no, to my Docker Compose file. And so to do that, I'll edit Docker Compose, come down to the bottom, paste that in, put a couple of line feeds so that I know where I was. And you can see what's vital, importantly, vitally important in here is the ports fields. Notice they are commented out. This Postgres database will have no exposed ports. It'll have a password of, user, of at Postgres Postgres, but most importantly, importantly, it has no, come on, there we go. It has no open ports. All right, well, that's great. So now let's keep on going. Now that we have our Docker Compose environment ready, we can start it up. Docker Compose. I always uh, give it a, a program or a project of PG for Postgres. And I always do a down minus V first, just to make sure. No resource found to remove. Oh, good. Just to make sure there's nothing there. Now I'll do an up. And when I do an up, that'll start configuring itself and we don't need to look at it. But while that configures itself, we can execute into the Postgres uh, DB container using the password Postgres, the username Postgres, the database Postgres, and we can configure our Postgres database. We're gonna create a simple database called SimpleDB, alter the database, the owner of Postgres, and then connect to that database. Once done, we can now create a simple table that has two columns, some number and char data. Insert some values into char data and some number, and then select back from that table. So if you see char data and some number, A through J, one through zero, you know you have successfully configured the database for this particular sample. I'm gonna shrink this down because the most important thing to remember, we have Postgres running on port 5432, but it is not exposed to my local machine. So only port 1280 and 3022, and then 1080 and 6262, but we're not gonna talk about those are exposed to our Ubuntu control uh, container, uh, sorry, uh, computer, the, the Windows subsystem for Linux, Ubuntu machine. The port 5432, if I try to netcat the local host, 
5432 with a minus V, you'll see connection is failed. Nothing is listening on port 5432. Make sure you have nothing listening on port 5432, and then let's continue. Once you're ready, you can go ahead and source a script from the internet. Make sure you read it first if you are interested. And this will put ZD on your path. If you don't have ZD on your path, that's a nice, quick, easy way to get ZD on your path because the next thing you'll want to do is log in to your overlay network. So we'll do a ZD Edge login, localhost 1280, give it a username, give it a password. And then we're ready to configure the overlay network. First thing we'll do is we'll create an identity that is the Postgres client. We'll give it an attribute of Postgres clients because then I can authorize all of my Postgres client identities by referencing an attribute and we'll send the token to enroll out to a file. Next, we will enroll that JWT, so we'll make a strong identity. We'll authorize the edge router to offload traffic back toward the Postgres server. We're not gonna do that in this command. This command only adds an attribute. We'll actually do the authorization later on. So now if I do a ZD edge list identity, you'll see I have two identities. One is Postgres clients, one is Postgres servers. At this point, I can now create two configurations. First configuration is an intercept config. It'll be used by the Java SDK to locate the service, Zedified Postgres, that it will actually send the data to. The port is consequential only so far as to locate the service. It is not actually used. Let's go ahead and make the, internet, the intercept config. And then we need a, a configuration to offload traffic. So we call those a host V1. This will offload traffic on TCP to the host name, in this case, Postgres database, so that hyphen DD, to port 5432 on the underlay. Configs by themselves don't do much, so now we need to create a service that knits the two configs together, Postgres intercept v1, Postgres host v1, and we're going to assign an attribute to the service called Postgres private Postgres services. If there were more than one, this attribute would be helpful, but in this example, it's not going to be particularly helpful. We'll do it anyway. Finally, we authorize the clients to dial by making a service policy. So the Postgres clients can dial the private Postgres services. And then we'll want our servers to be able to bind that particular service. In this case, Postgres servers can bind or uh, yeah, bind any services with the attribute private Postgres services. Perfect. So now if we do a Z edge policy advisor for services, we'll see the Postgres client capable of binding the ZD edge router is sorry. The Postgres client is capable of dialing the ZD edge router capable of binding. All right. And we're nearly ready to go before you go. Make sure you test that ZD edge controller is pingable to whatever IP your Docker Compose environment is running in. In this case, it's all running in one machine, so it should be pointing to localhost. And the same is true for ZD edge router. Make sure you can ping both of those two things. Then when you're ready, come back and let's run the sample. So run the sample, we CD to JDBC Postgres. And then we just run, oh, in fact, <laughs> I need to copy the JSON file. So let's, I forgot, I, I made the JSON file back here. G, my JSON, we'll make it, we'll move it here instead. That way, when I run Gradle W, when we run Gradle W, run the run task and give it the args, PG client JSON. This will go through and compile and then actually end up running. And so you'll see results from the database, A, equals one, B equals two, et cetera, et cetera. So we have successfully attached to a totally private Postgres server and uh, we, uh, we have succeeded. That's uh, the entire demonstration. I hope you've enjoyed it. Hit us up on Discourse if you have any questions. Uh, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, go to the GitHub repository and give us that star. We always appreciate it. See you next time.